एवरीवन आई एम मीनाक्षी एंड आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू तथास्तु एंड वेलकम बैक टू आवर एनवायरनमेंट एंड इकोलॉजी सीरीज वेयर इन वी आर डिस्कसिंग द इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट्स ऑफ एनवायरनमेंट एंड वी हैव डिस्कस्ड मेजरली अबाउट द वेरी बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट इकोसिस्टम एंड वी हैव स्टार्टेड अवर दीस बायोजियोकेमिकल साइकल्स और दीस न्यूट्रिएंट साइकल्स वेयर इन वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द गैसियस साइकल दैट इज अवर कार्बन साइकल एज़ वेल एज़ वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अवर about our nitrogen cycle so in today's video we will be discussing about sedimentary cycle with special focus on phosphorus cycle so this phosphorus cycle is part of the sedimentary cycle so we will be discussing about it before that these are the courses which are offered by tathastu ics for all of you there is mslv it specifically targets your mains examination then there is ncert module you can register for it then there is PSLV, which will specifically target your prelims examination, and it will be launching super soon. And then there is philosophy optional, so you can inquire about these courses on these contact numbers. Also, you can visit the office on this address. And if you have any further doubts, you can visit the Thastu's website also. And I hope you have got the information about the courses now. let's begin our lecture which is about phosphorus cycle and as i have said clearly that this is part of our sedimentary cycle we have discussed the gaseous cycles which are carbon and nitrogen so today we will be discussing about this phosphorus cycle so we are discussing about it that means it is an important component right it is important for plants and animals alike see plants need it for their growth for their cell division it, it helps in this growing the tip of the plant and if we talk about animals it is uh, important for animals as well because it helps in their bones and muscle growth in improving their metabolism in uh, in improving their uh, this milk productivity so that means it is important for both of them alike so we will be discussing about it that how this cycle how this nutrient cycle functions what is the flow we have basically discussed uh, when we discussed about this carbon and nitrogen cycle we have discussed how from atmosphere the whole process takes place when we discussed about starting um, if we talk about i hope you have seen those videos so you can better understand this one when we discussed about carbon when we discussed about nitrogen that how from the atmosphere they are transferred to various organism and then back to the atmosphere again but now and these were our gaseous cycle but now here's a twist that this phosphorus is not present in the atmosphere so how this particular this phosphorus enters this cycle and how the whole process works we are studying about it so let's start the phosphorus cycle is basically a uh, biogeochemical cycle simply the nutrient cycle and it regulates the flow of phosphorus in various chemical forms across diverse system be it our biosphere be it our uh, lithosphere biosphere or hydrosphere so we will be studying the flow of this phosphorus now this phosphorus cycle is considered one of the uh, slowest biogeochemical among those other biogeochemical cycles so we have studied about carbon nitrogen this is phosphorus and uh, in next class we will be discussing about the sulfur cycle but if we talk about this particular phosphorus cycle this is considered the slowest among all these cycles why because uh, when we talk about see when we talk about plants and animals it moves on quickly right the process is swift the process is fast but when we talk about the soil and sea water uh, the process we will be learning you will understand it but when we talk about the soil and sea water it moves very slowly through them and it takes years uh, again to get back to release back into the atmosphere so this uh, to uh, uh, this deposit this sediment so this is why it is considered one of the slowest biogeochemical cycles i hope this much is clear let's move forward so <clears throat> if we talk about this carbon and nitrogen so what we have seen and i hope you have watched those videos uh, uh, then only you can understand it very easily because i think this is one of the most easiest cycle to understand so if we talk about carbon and nitrogen what we have seen that they both are present in atmosphere 
we have talked about this uh, division uh, in other class also the 78 percent nitrogen 21 percent oxygen although carbon is pr present in very minor quantity but it is very essential so but what is more important that they were the carbon and nitrogen both were present in the atmosphere contrary to it opposite to it the the source of phosphorus we don't get it from atmosphere so contrary to carbon and nitrogen which predominantly which are predominantly atmospheric constituent we get it from there and then the whole cycle flows and they are released back into the atmosphere contrary to this opposite to this this phosphorus is found in high concentration as a mineral in phosphate rocks and through these rocks through the weathering of these rocks and through the erosion of these rocks this phosphorus enters the cycle through this various mining and erosion or through the weathering of this rocks now in simple terms where from where we find it in phosphate rocks and through various weathering and erosion process this phosphorus enters this nutrient cycle i hope this much is clear that from where do uh, does this process start so it starts from this phosphorus rocks now the main storage if we talk about the earth crust also contains point 10 to 0.12% by weight of phosphorus and on land if we talk about the land area the phosphorus is usually found in the form of phosphates so this is the source from where this phosphorus cycle starts now let's see the process how it works it is one of the i uh, as i have said it is one of the simplest cycles to understand so this is the procedure uh, there are four stages how does it work let's see it and then we will understand very easily through diagram you will uh, understand it in one time only because it is very easy so these are the four process tectonic uplift and or surface weathering as i have said that the, this phosphorus enters through uh, enters the cycle through this weathering or erosion then we have absorption by plants mostly we have seen it in carbon cycle or if this nitrogen cycles they all are similar you just have to understand the source from where they are emerging and then how they are absorbed by plants then how they are consumed by animals it is almost similar in every cycle and lastly we have this decomposition so basically these three process we have already studied in our other previous cycles right so these are some stages how does it start to so see let's understand it through this diagram so this is the rocks right when it rains these rocks you know uh, the weather the phosphorus is released through them through this weathering or erosion so you can see it in this diagram and through this runoff sometimes they enter the water cycle also but some mostly they are uh, this absorbed by plants in this form of soil so they are absorbed by plants so plants can fulfill their need of phosphorus from here now then when uh, similar cycle uh, uh, when the herbivores consume these plants so they uh, fulfill their need and when the carnivores consume those animals they fulfill their need so the cycle is similar uh, and uh, the, it starts from these weathering of rocks especially when it rains it, you can see that there is weathering of rocks or erosion so this is how it enters the cycle from uh, then it enters to plants from plants it enters to animal or and when they died or decompose so this particular thing this phosphates are released back into the soil again where also when it rained they are also leached into these water bodies so they are also present in these uh, uh, oceans or lakes you can say so they are also leached into these water bodies and with time this detritus they settle they settle down at the bottom so they just a minute so they settle down at the bottom uh, uh, over here they just settle down over here sediments is formed then these new rocks are formed and that what happens then through various these geological process we say over years this upwelling this tectonic uplifting 
takes place so these rocks ultimately comes back to the surface again again the whole cycle uh, follows it rains or sometimes they are weathered away they are uh, there's uh, there takes place this erosion then it is consumed by a certain plants then animals then sometimes uh, then decomposition uh, this uh, phosphate is transferred back to the soil and then sometimes uh, they are leached into these water bodies they settle down at the bottom they form these new rocks and with time this tectonic uplifting or upwelling takes place then again they are released so this is how this cycle works and one of the most easiest cycle and it is very important so as i have said in the beginning only it is uh, important for plants and animals alike that is the reason why because our soil does not contain much phosphorus and it is required by plants for their growth so this is one of the reason why farmers specifically apply this phosphatic fertilizer so i hope you can understand that ki this is very important for plants growth and this is the reason why these farmers apply this phosphatic fertilizers and this was the cycle the most easiest cycle that how it functions now let's see a question there was a question which was asked in your upsc prelims examination and this is the question in case of which one of the following biogeochemical cycles so we have been asked about these biogeochemical cycles the weathering of rocks is the main source of release of nutrient to enter the cycle so this was the question which was asked they have asked about this weathering of rocks is the main source see just now i have said while uh, seeing this this thing that this process is almost same just remember the source from where that cycle started it is most important to remember so always remember the source in this in these cycles we'll be doing the sulfur cycle in our next class so these three we have completed and from today's class we can solve this question we can uh, we have got our answer that the uh, main source of release of nutrient to enter the cycle through this weathering of rocks is done in phosphorus cycle see when upsc asks a question so the right option we have studied but the other three options which are not correct which are left are also important so always when you try to solve a previous year question focus on these options also why they are wrong so we have almost completed our two options we have we are done with carbon cycle we are done with nitrogen cycle we are, today we have completed this phosphorus cycle sulfur cycle we will be completing in next class but i hope you have understood it and you found the session helpful if you found it helpful Full, please like the video and subscribe to the channel thank you